pound for pound. Let's go. Best fighter in the world. It's Devin's time. It's Haney time. You talked all that shit? Yeah, 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 now what? It's time now. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 The best. This shit don't stop. It's the best. Please. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Man, I'm telling you, if only we knew all of the stories, all of the sparring that goes on behind closed doors. Sparring doesn't always tell the entire story, but it definitely gives you a lot of insight. It definitely shows you that there are so many levels to this, right? And what Devin Haney just said in this recent interview with the Boxing Voice proves just that. He was talking about uh, Javante fighting against Hector Garcia, and he revealed that he sparred with Hector Garcia and implied that it was very, very easy work, which you're going to hear in the clip that I'm going to play for you guys. And understand this. Of course, some fighters, you know, they say, oh, yeah, I sparred with someone. So, yeah, it was easy work. And, you know, a lot of times it's cap. But you can tell when someone is genuine when they say it. Devin was saying that Javante, he's been fighting tune-ups pretty much his whole career. And the reporter said, yeah, but you can't really say Hector Garcia is a tune-up. And Devin said, I sparred with him. He's a tune-up. Now, when Devin implies that Hector Garcia was easy work in the gym, I believe him because he sounds extremely genuine. Boxing is like... Every fight these days, like everybody say, oh, they got a tune up. It's a tune up, tune up, tune up, tune up. Like, how many tune ups do you got to do? Tate been doing tune ups for how long now? So, I mean. Well, uh, you can't really say that this guy he's fighting is a tune up. I mean, he's fighting a world champion. Granted, he's bringing him up. He's bringing him up, but I mean, still a world champion nonetheless. I sparred him. He's a tune up. <laughs> Bob Santo said he, he put hands on you. I kicked him out of camp. He got kicked out of camp because I, uh, he couldn't yeah, keep he couldn't, up. He couldn't last. I, was, I sparred him for the Jojo Diaz fight. I think I sparred him like two, time, two mm. times or three times, something like that. And uh, he just couldn't keep up. So uh, I kicked him out and got some videos. Okay, so the first correction that needs to be made is Javante Tang Davis has not been fighting tune ups in his last three fights. Because the truth is, if there were any fighters today on the hopeless, any non-black fighters that fought and knocked out all of the opponents that Javante knocked out, they would have him not only on the pound for pound list, but they would have him number one on the pound for pound list. Because remember, a lot of old media websites now have NOA at number one, and he doesn't have the resume that Javante Tang Davis has. In fact, Inoue has the weakest resume on the pound-for-pound -pound list. And something else when it comes to this tune-up talk. You know, the truth is, Devin Haney, Javante, Shakur, they stay consistently going after the most dangerous opponents. And they have great resumes, all of them. But yet, all of them have been praising Canelo for so long. And at the time that Devin Haney was praising Canelo Alvarez, which was like about two years ago when he was really praising him heavy, that was at the time when Canelo was fighting fighters like Yil Durham, Caleb Smith, Caleb Plant, uh, Kovalev. If Devin is calling Hector Garcia a tune-up, even if he did handle him pretty easy in sparring, you've got to call all those opponents that uh, Canelo Alvarez fought at 168 tune-ups. The truth is Canelo would have never fought a Hector Garcia. He would have never fought an Isaac Cruz. In fact, if he did, he would have lost to Cruz because Cruz has a much better defense and he would put way too much pressure on Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez is not an inside fighter. He's definitely not a volume puncher. That's why he always gasses out. That's why he gassed out in the Bivol fight because Bivol forced him to throw more punches than he really wanted to. Now, because Canelo loves his Eastern Europeans, he would probably fight Lomachenko if they were naturally the same weight, but he would get dominated the same way Bivol dominated him. In fact, if the roles were reversed and it was Canelo that was fighting Lomachenko next instead of Devin Haney, old media would be calling this damn near the fight of the decade. It would be such an evenly matched fight, right? But because Devin Haney is fighting Lomachenko and they know that there are levels to this, 
and they all know that the black American boxers are on the highest level in the game, there's no longer that much of an anticipation to watch this fight if the wrong guy is going to win. And that just goes to show you how high the bar is set when you're on the coincidental list. Oh, media, they went from praising Lomachenko like he was better than Floyd Mayweather. In fact, they were saying he would have beat Floyd Mayweather. They said Lomachenko was pound for pound number one, the best fight in the world. Then after Devin Haney became the youngest undisputed champion in the sport, they had Lomachenko on the pound for pound list and didn't have Devin Haney on the list, right? But now that Devin Haney is fighting him, when they think no one is looking, they remove Lomachenko from the pound for pound list and put Devin Haney back on it because they feel the results of this fight is such a foregone conclusion they don't want to give Devin Haney the credit of beating another fighter that they had on that pound for pound list. So while Devin Haney is saying that all of Tank's fights are tune-ups, old media is trying to actually treat Lomachenko or trying to treat the Lomachenko fight like it's a tune-up for Devin Haney. We know what time it is. But see, what old media doesn't understand is the damage is already done. You can't erase what you already put on the internet. You are already comparing this man to Floyd Mayweather. You just had him on the pound for pound list. It wasn't that long ago that they were saying that uh, Lomachenko was number one, the best fighter in the world, even over Terrence Crawford. Even when Lomachenko lost to Teofimo Lopez, to this day, ESPN, they make excuses for why Lomachenko lost. That wasn't the real Lomachenko because he was injured. The real Lomachenko was the one we seen against Nakatani. This is the stuff that ESPN was saying. But now, once again, when he's fighting against Devin Haney, oh, well, you know, he's not the same anymore. We know what time it is. Old media and everyone else knows deep down, the truth is, if Devin Haney goes in there and completely dominates Lomachenko, that really puts Devin Haney in the top three pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world list. I mean, no one on that list has been praised the way Lomachenko has been praised by, of course, old media. Now, when it comes to Devin Haney kicking Hector Garcia out of the gym, I really want to know more about that because I truly believe Devin when he says that, you know, it was easy work, but you don't usually kick fighters out of the gym for being easy work, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. It happens. It's just rare. And I've seen people get kicked out of the gym for starting fights in the gym, but not for getting beat up by the champion that they're sparring with. So I really wish the reporter would have followed up on that question so we could really find out in detail exactly what happened the day that he kicked him out of the gym. But with that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com, like them on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.